Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. Today we are gonna do something that is not fun. No one wants to do it, not even me. It is cleaning your Glowforge. Yeah, bummer, I know. Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. Today we are gonna do something that is not fun. Nobody wants to do it, including me, and that is cleaning our Glowforge laser. Yeah, I said it. If you're watching this, the time has come and you have to clean it too. We don't want to do that. Ugh, it's so scary. The very first time you do it, it's the scariest thing, but once you do it once and you do a full deep clean from top to bottom and inside and out, it'll be a breeze. It's gonna be easy. There are a few things that you are going to need to grab. Make sure that you have on hand just for cleaning and just in case purposes. I'll link all of this down in the description of this video that you can go and watch and click and buy and all that fun jazz. But essentially, this is the things that you're going to need. The Glowforge is going to come with this little tool. If it came in your box and you threw it away, we got an issue and you have to buy another one. Hopefully you did not and you still have it. It's this little tool. You're going to need this. The other thing that the Glowforge did not come with, but you are going to need, is a, a little Allen wrench hex tool thing. It didn't come with one. I'm not sure what size it is. I'm sure you have a set of these somewhere in your house. Just grab whichever one. I'll show you where you're going to need to figure out the size for this. So one of these, um, you should already have a box of these and you can get them at Walmart for super cheap. I think this is like $5 for this gigantic box at Walmart. Get it in the optical section. That's where they're generally at. You should already have a box of these because you need to be cleaning your lenses. If not, you need this. I like to clean my Glowforge with Clorox wipes. Um, just pick yourself up some. I know a lot of other people use the Awesome Cleaner and a dust-free cloth uh, microfiber cloth you can get that too but this is just easy we have a bunch of them at home so I just I just like to use what I have on hand okay the additional purchases that you don't have to do however if you break one of these parts then you're kind of up a creek without a paddle until you get the spare parts you can get them from Glowforge you have to contact them and if you've not dealt with Glowforge's customer service, then you don't know that it's actually not that great. So you can get these off of Etsy. Um, I'll link the ones that I purchased this, but they're like just little carriage, carriage things. I don't even know what they're called. They do tend to break, especially when you're cleaning them. There's some that have the bearings in them and some that do not like these ones right here. These ones are 3D printed. They're a lot more sturdier. When you, it happens. I've cleaned my machine. This is now my third Glowforge. Let's not get into all of that. But this is my third Glowforge and I, every single time I clean, I clean my machine. I always prep and buy extras of these just in case. Now, not every single time do you clean your machine, are you gonna break these? The first time though, you probably will. I know I did, twice. <laughs> Nobody told me I should buy these before cleaning my machine. And I'm telling you now, don't do what I did. Buy these first, then clean your machine. Because if you break these, you can hurry up and fix them and be on your way you know what not to do next time. It's a really tight space over there. It's not very small. My hallway is very, very tight. So I will try and get all of the, um, all the cleaning parts for you and talk you through it. It should take you, depending on how dirty it is, mine is very, very dirty. Very dirty. Um, but if it's not that dirty, it should only take you about 15 minutes. And if it's like mine, it'll probably take you about an hour because I just wait till the very last second to clean my machine. All right, let's go to the Glowforge and let's start cleaning. All right, we are now at the Glowforge. It's a really tight little space right here. Um, first, I always like to start with the outside. So just getting one of your Clorox wipes. Make sure it's not sopping wet. You definitely don't want it sopping wet. And we're just going to just wipe off. I forgot to tell you, make sure your machine is off. 
off. Don't have it turned on. Okay, and I'm just throwing stuff on the ground because it's about ready to get real messy on the inside. Put that little guy up there. Okay, then you wanna do is open it up, not too far, but just open it up, grabbing another Clorox wipe. And I am going to wipe off just the glass. Do not clean that lens with these. Don't clean these lights with these. Don't clean anything but the glass with this. How disgusting that was. Yuck. That was gross. Just throwing that on the grip. Okay. Grabbing another rag. I'm just going to go back through again because I mean might as well since we're here. Since the glow forge is off, what you can do is move this forward. That'll make doing this job a lot easier, but you definitely want to move it forward. And I'm going to take my wipe and I'm going to clean my glass tube. Disgusting. Okay, I'm going to push this back real quick. Put it back. Open up the bottom spot. If you wanted to, you can clean this spot. I never do because it doesn't matter to me. Um, and then pull out your crumb tray. When you pull out your crumb tray, make sure you shake it out to get all of the stuff. You can hear it. There's stuff in there. So you want to make sure that you shake it out. I won't be able to show you that, but shake that out to make sure you get all the uh, stuff that's in there out. Now taking another Clorox wipe, you're going to wipe down everything that's in here. I actually have a ton of scraps right here. Make sure and take that out and throw it away. I have a little trash can right here that I like to put my... Now, if you have a little vacuum, this would be a perfect time to use it. A little shot back. Okay, you have little notches in your um, crumb tray, like in the base for your crumb tray. Make sure and have those channels cleaned out and also make sure that there are no extra debris where the swing arm needs to go. So if it does not freely come back and forth, there's something in your track line and you need to make sure that it's clean. I had noticed inside of my door right here, in between the door and the glow forge, there's this little lip right here. Sometimes things get pushed down in there when you're you know, removing items or whatever. I just take my little weeding tool and I kind of try and fish that out because it does make your door not shut appropriately. Try not to get things in this in this little area. Now that that part is done, what we are going to do is only use your fingers on this head, put it to the middle, middle and pull it up a little bit. Don't put your fingers right here on this lens or underneath because there's lenses underneath. Do you see that? Don't put your finger right here or underneath, taking your hands and just holding the corners and bring it towards you and lift up. They are held in by really strong magnets. So you're gonna need to tug a little bit, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, on the cable ribbon itself, there is like a little button, just press that button and pull. Put that ribbon back. Okay, so this is your print head. You need to clean these three and this with an alcohol wipe. Set that down. Make sure to not touch the lenses with anything. Taking one of these lens wipes, these are the only lens wipes that I suggest using. Don't get another off brand, don't try and go cheap. Always, always, always get these lenses, these lens wipes. Okay. Now, what you need to do is just 
kind of nicely wipe the lenses and then this one too. Okay, and then with your with your tool right here on one side it says remove and on the other side it says install. So with the remove, that little gray is the magnet. You want to stick that in the hole right here in the middle. You'll hear the magnet clip onto it. And then that is your lens right here. Lay this back down. Okay, now with that taken off, only touch the metal portion. Do not touch the lens. And there you go, take that off. Only with the lens wipe, not with your skin, you want to wipe your lens off. Okay. When you go to reinstall it, don't put it like this because this is the remove. You want to turn around where it says install and there's no magnet. Then on the lens itself you see it might be hard to see but on the lens itself there is like a little arrow pointing up that means it needs to go up back into your uh, printer head so with your install right here with the arrow pointing up and your arrow lens pointing up okay do you see that middle part just Put it back in the hole. I can't show you how to do it because it won't let me. But you will hear the magnet like clip back in. There you go. Now it's back in there and it's perfect. Okay, one last thing. There's one more lens in here. If you open this little thing up, there's magnets in there. There is one right here. It is very simple. It doesn't do much. You pull it out. And there is a lens right here. I just cleaned mine off so I don't have to remove mine and clean, but you just pull that out. Now, when you go to push it back in, it will not go in like this. It will not go in like this. It will go in the only way that it knows how. So if it's sitting like this, this is not in. If it's sitting like this, it's not in. You need to make sure that it is back in there and that's the same way it came in is the same way it's or the same way it went out is the same way it came in okay and then all you have to do is take your lens after you're done wiping it off and your printer head cap there you go that portion is finished now if you wanted to you could wipe this off with a lens cloth there is a little fan that's back here make sure that that's clean um, in order I, sometimes I just use like a little pick and spray it off real quick. I also have this stuff right here that I use for my air assist fans. See that? Just shake it up a little bit. Make sure not touch the lens and you just want to spray. I should probably now clean my lenses again since I did that. Alrighty, now everything is clean and the lenses look really clean and good. Okay, I am not gonna reinstall this just yet because I gotta take the belt off and clean the next fan. Okay, there's that, that's all you need for that. Using your little hex tool, there is a hex bolt that's underneath here on this right side. This is what you're going to do to loosen up this belt so you can get this off. There is another fan on the back of this and in order to properly clean it, you do have to take off the belt and this in order to get to that fan. This is where the scary part, this is like the scariest part of the entire thing. So with the hex tool, find that little bolt. When you find it, push away from you to loosen the bolt. You don't have to go too much, just a little bit. I only, I only just pushed it just a little bit and now that you can see the ribbon, 
That's essentially what you want. You just want it to be able to move just a little bit. It's not going to move a whole lot, but just loosen it up and you can now see that the cable's on there. So I'm going to take that down and then this is going to fall down as well. Now with one hand, I'm going to pull, put your hand on this little metal piece, pull towards you and then down, pull down and towards you. And then there you go. Oh my word, look at how nasty that fan is. Y'all, this is why I needed to clean this thing. It is so, <laughs> it's so gross. Okay, with this cleaner, again, I'm just going to spray my fan. Oh, sorry y'all, I went to spray that off and then I remembered you need Q-tips for this part. It's been so long since I've cleaned it, I forgot that you need Q-tips. So, so gross. Yeah. I mean, don't go this long without cleaning your fan. <laughs> My hands are disgusting, but it's clean now. See? Nice and clean. Okay, I'm just going to take my squirt and I'm going to squirt around here to get rid of all the rest of the dust. All right, the next step is where the scary part happens. Those little bolt things that I was showing you earlier, these and these, it is for this right here. When you put this back on, you have to make sure that you have enough pressure forward or you have pulled it forward to where it clears the little bar right here. When you go to do this once, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But these right here will crack under pressure. That is why you want a replacement of these because if this cracks, all you have to do is unhook that and put a new one back on there. But I'm gonna show you how to do this so you, hopefully you don't break these. But it happens if you do, don't worry. It's like $2 for a fix. Okay, make sure and have your belt on the inside portion right here. Don't have it hanging like this. It needs to be like this. And make sure that there's no kinks or coils in your belt. So the way I do it is just like a ribbon. Just kind of make sure that there's no kinks or coils in your ribbon. Yep, okay. You have to put these, this right here, this little back carriage bolt, you need to put it on the back of the metal arm that you were just, that it was just at. Oof. So, with your hand, kind of feel around, and you can feel it, there's like a little lip back there. Rested on there when you kind of feel you can kind of feel that it's rested on there. See how it's on like a downward angle Okay Same way when you went When when you took it out you pulled forward and pushed down now We want to pull forward and push up So with your hands on the metal part on this metal part pull forward and push up and you see how it just nicely clicked on there? Pull forward and push down. So you wanna make sure you pull forward and push up. If you do not, and you snag this little bit right here, it will cause that pressure and it will crack that little plastic piece. It's an important plastic piece. So be mindful and be easy when you do that. So it's pull forward, push down. When you go to push it back in, pull forward and push up. Don't forget to pull forward. Now, with your ribbon, see how there's no tangles in it, you wanna find that one little spot that's over here and you wanna hook it in there. Again, just like how you had it before. And then with your ribbon, oops, it's easier if I'm not explaining this. 
Okay, then with your ribbon, again, on the right hand side, you want to find that little bolt that you unscrewed. Find it there. Make sure that it's tight. It's not going to be too tight, but make sure that it's tight. And now you want to push your bolt to the right to the right position with your hex code with your hex key and find that hole again. Okay, I found it. Now when you tighten it, you have to pull it towards you. Okay. That's pretty tight. Now, see how the ribbon is not overly tight, but not loose and hanging down anymore. That's exactly what you want. You should be able to move your carriage back and forth. That's exactly what you want. Okay, now, if you wanted to, you could take this and wipe throughout here. I don't. Um, I like to keep my grimy little hands off of things that have electronics like the lights or the cable ribbon, all that stuff. I like to keep away from that, so I don't do that. If you wanted to, you could, but again, that's not for me. I'm going to use another wipe real quick, and I'm just going to get my tube. This is a preference. You don't have to do this. To reinstall your printer head, make grab it and make sure you don't touch those lenses that you took nice and care of to wipe off. When you hold your hands, hold it on the corners. Don't touch those lenses. Push it like this at the very top. Remember, it, it's going to just hook on in there because it's stuck with a magnet. Taking your ribbon, make sure there's no kinks or coils in it, and just plug it back into your little spot. Click it. It'll click, and then just hook it back into there. You will know when it is clicked on and good. If it's not, if it doesn't click on and it's not sitting there, you'll know it. Okay, I'm gonna push that over to the very, very back and to the left, and I'm gonna reinstall my Glowforge uh, crumb tray. Okay, when you reinstall it, make sure your crumb tray is in the grooves of that. Just to double check to make sure it's in correctly, bring your arm all the way forward and all the way back. Just so you know, the track is completely clear. If it's not clear, you will ruin your, your machine. See how it wants to go forward? That's perfect. Now, that is it. Done. You have cleaned your glow forged and you have messy hands, but hopefully this was helpful for you. All right, y'all. I will see you later.